This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey guys, it is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. I'm back with you. This is, the, this is the show where we talk with people in and around independent professional wrestling. And we have a special edition two for uh, with you this evening. Also, uh, recording this in the midst of a uh, video game marathon for Extra Life. So that's fun. Go check out Lord Sorg on Twitch if you're uh, 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 joining us live or afterwards and support the Extra Life proceedings there. Please donate. It's for the kids. It's for the local uh, children's hospital. Uh, and, uh, of course, please go check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com and IndieWrestling.us where you can find this and other uh, great interviews we've had with people over the years, including some people that are on TV and pay-per-view. And you never know because I have a feeling our guests today were probably going to be on all those things very, very soon. And who knows what country at this rate, too, right? Uh, with us, first of all, in studio, we have the apex of combat himself. He is Lee Moriarty. He's thumbs upping everybody, if you're on audio. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas? It's September, sir. Not in my spirit. Not in your spirit? No. You keep it all year round. All year round. All year round. You're my with us. Elf. In studio, and also with us uh, from uh, the, 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 the PB Smooth Compound. I don't know where you're calling from, actually, technically. So <laughs> we didn't clarify that. The concrete Jungle. PB Smooth, the Concrete Jungle, is joining Mr. us. Mr. Jeff, larger than life, pretty boy smooth. Got to get that right, baby. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't get all the monikers down beforehand. Uh, so, But join us over the Facebook uh, uh, connection. That's working really good. It's the first time we've used this. Uh, thanks for joining us, PB. Thank you for having me. So uh, the reason we're all gathered here today uh, is uh, uh, there was this little magazine uh, that came out last week called the Pro Wrestling Illustrated. And the PW500 list uh, was released. And, uh, and, and both you guys were uh, debuting on it. Uh, PB Smooth at 379, Lee at 460. And, and I asked you guys to be on the show, not even thinking about the fact that you guys are completely facing each other at Rise Wrestling. In a uh, in a rise of, of a contender tournament uh, opening round there, so it really was kind of the perfect um, it, it the perfect melding of everything at one time to get you guys on here. Um, so I wanted to talk to you guys about you know the list that and kind of what you guys have been doing lately since we both had you on individually on the show uh, of in the past year or so. Um, so I guess first of all, like, what does it mean for you guys to be, you know, debuting on a list like that? The 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 the, the 29th annual PWI 500. Uh, you want him to answer first or me? Lee, losers first, PB. So you go. <laughs> Definitely you, man. No, you gotta go. first, so it's you. It's you. The trash talk has been flying pretty good on uh, on on social media, so this is not right. surprising. I'll be the bigger man since I am the bigger man. Anyway. um... I wasn't too familiar with the, the PWI magazine because I was still um, new to independent wrestling. This is my fourth year doing it. And I only knew about it maybe six to eight months prior before I actually started training and whatnot. And, and, well, that, and that's right. As a, a, just to back up, like you, you came out of the basketball world a, athletically, uh, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So um, it was kind of cool because I remember, I don't know if it was this time last year, but at some point, I was in a grocery store, and then I saw the magazine. I'm just flipping through it, and I'm seeing names of people that I know and stuff, and it was just dope because I've been in stuff like that for basketball but never for wrestling. Mm -hmm. So just seeing me get that opportunity to be in there now just shows, like, some of the progress that I've made. I'm really proud of that. Excellent. What about you, Lee? What did you think when you heard that it, it, it popped up? Your name popped up on that list. It was pretty cool. It meant something more to me personally than professionally mm -hmm. because as a teenager, I used to get that magazine, especially the 500 one, and being on a list of guys you looked up to or grew up watching, mm -hmm. it's kind of cool. Like That was a bucket list thing. It didn't matter what number I was. It was just getting you on made that it. list at least once. Yeah, yeah. So I could say like, hey, I'm on a list with guys I grew up watching. Mm-hmm. 
kind of it's kind of like the the you know a title you can add to your Wikipedia, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know the the AAW title, the Rise Grand Championship, PWI five hundred for you guys, right? Yeah. So, um, what I want to talk about because both you guys have been it seems everywhere, popping up everywhere, facing some great challengers. Um, you, you know, listed in here, you know, Lee, you, you, you were, uh, uh, cited for taking on, uh, do, 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 what did I say? Ophidian and, uh, Colin Delaney over the past year. And of course, PB, we know about your, uh, AIW, uh, uh, championship up there. I think we saw that at revenge in area a few months ago, you brought it with you and, uh, or maybe I'm thinking rise. I don't know. They all kind of mesh together. <laughs> that, was revenge. that was revenge. Okay. And, uh, and of course, you know, you've been a uh, tag champs up there with a uh, horn swoggle. Or uh, swoggle, I guess officially. Where's I, mean, I, I guess so I don't get sued, right? It is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you guys, like I say, you guys have been doing a, a lot. It seems like uh, both of you. It feels like you stepped up your game over the last couple of years. Can you talk a little bit about you know what have you guys been doing to kind of get out there and and get in front of people? Because I think this that's mostly what this feels like a testament to is is that you're getting people's attention widely and not and not just in like the pittsburgh area the erie area the cleveland area or anything like that oh lee, lee do you uh, want to go or who pb uh i feel like the best thing that helped me was getting in cars you know if i had a weekend where i wasn't booked i'd see um who around me was booked in certain areas and like offer to help pay gas or something to get there mm-hmm. and it's, it's it's a little bit different when a promoter sees you face to face as opposed to seeing them emails because a lot of them get hundreds of emails, but when they actually see you showed up there, you're willing to help, willing to do whatever you can to get a spot on the show with the opportunity, like it, it means a lot more. Because there are a few shows I went to where um, I really wasn't on the card initially, and then after I proved myself, they started bringing me back. So uh, just jumping in cars and being able to uh, kind of treat it almost like an internship in a sense like being being willing to go out your way to go do things for little or no money at first just to show that you are worth what you're asking for and then it just goes from there that's awesome what about you lee pretty much the same thing just trying to get out of pittsburgh doing as much as i can outside of here Mm -hmm. like tryouts or um seminars things like that a lot of it um like I did the Chikara masterclass, which is a two day thing. And I just did that because I wanted to learn. Like I was talking to a Fidian over a year ago in Cleveland about one. And I happened to not be booked that weekend. And I really wanted to do one and learn as much as I could. Is that one of his or one of quacks or kind of, it both? was the master classes or like a, a combination of a bunch of different people. So I learned from quack and Bush of Jimmy rave, wow. Rory Gulak, solo darling, Shane Hawk, like a bunch of people. And from that, they kind of, they knew who I was and Rory Gulak actually recommended me to do the Young Lions Cup when they had someone had to pull out. So it's stuff like that, just getting in front of people's eyes and seeing you Mm -hmm. and opportunities show up for for me. That's how it happened. Just kind of get out there and create those opportunities, right? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't want to be, so there's a term, a Pittsburgh wrestler. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be a Pittsburgh wrestler. I wanted to be a wrestler from Pittsburgh. Okay. I feel like there's a difference. Yeah, yeah, well, there is that, and and you know, not to say there's anything wrong with one way or the other, but there are like people that are like they, they're just kind of in the area. Maybe they cross a border here and there, but but there is like you know, what's your bubble, right? Yeah, kind of to that. Uh, we're getting some questions from the chat room. Um, uh, Marcus is out there, and he's actually asking uh, for Lee. How do you feel about being ranked uh, a spot higher than Walking Wild, the former DJ Z, aka the formerly known as Shima Zion? <laughs> Uh, it's who, who just debuted on NXT, by the way. It's subjective. It's a list <laughs> created by someone. So he's still, to me, one of the best professional wrestlers in the world. He's mm-hmm. the reason I started learning Lucha Libre. I think he's one of the seminars you attended, right? Yeah, he he's the reason I went to Mexico. Yeah. All that oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I started learning Lucha Libre because of him and mm-hmm. doing those classes with him before going down there. Well, I want to touch on that for a minute because you you – we've talked about before in this conversation has come up a lot like your goal is japan yeah right and and i you know i think you know that's that's kind of the style you've been looking at mostly um kind of growing up as you were developing that was a lot of what i watched but Mm -hmm. 
people around me made a good point. Even like I watched Sam Adonis's interview with you and he was saying, yeah, don't wrestle like a Japanese wrestler if you want to wrestle in Japan. Yeah. So I, there's certain influences I take from Japanese wrestling, but I don't want to wrestle mm -hmm. like them because they're already over there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Japanese wrestling is a big influence on me. Okay. That's kind of is what your Taiga style kind of is that, that, that melding of everything, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what about you, uh, uh, PB? What are you know uh, styles and what you're taking from all these seminars? Like, where were you going? You know, obviously you're you're a seven footer, so you know. But uh, I, I, as I've stated probably the last couple times I filmed you, um, there's moments and matches where you you can scary move uh, <laughs> for your size. Um, like you know, of course it takes two steps for you to clear a, a ringside run. I think. Um, I kind of look at myself as just somebody that uses animal instinct. And what I mean by that is I try to find a way to adapt to the person I'm wrestling and knowing what their weak point is and using what I have mm -hmm. to get me where I need to go. So I don't really say I'm, I'm strong style or I'm this or I'm that. Cause like I kind of use what I have and just adapt to whatever I got to do. And, uh, it just so happens that I do overpower a lot of people. So, you know, I can turn to Batista real quick. And, and apparently, uh, um, you know, as we kind of noticed, you 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 take on all sizes, teaming with Hornswoggle, uh, matchups with Jinx now Ziggy Haim, uh, in the Rise promotion, and I think some other places too. Yeah, um, I, I feel like if I'm able to wrestle anybody, that'll get me where I need to go. Mm -hmm. Like I don't I don't look at it as oh I need to perfect like this one particular thing because everybody's different you know what i what works on lee may not work on another person you know what i'm saying so you gotta just learn how to adjust on the fly and learn from that experience pretty much excellent have you been getting a lot of um since you guys have been announced here i think this is about a week ago as of this recording uh for the pwa 500 has, has there been a like an influx of interest of response like what was what first how did you find out uh i found out lawless david wallace texted me telling me congratulations oh yeah i was like what are you talking about and then he uh, told me i made that and then later on a promotion i work for indiana paradigm wrestling they tag some that's of a hell guys. of a name yeah paradigm paradigm pro wrestling <laughs> but pb was in that same post like they tag mm -hmm. guys that work for the promotions that i made on that list cool cool uh and how, how's been like the kind of a, a reaction since then it, i've definitely gotten a little bit more attention mm -hmm. so people do there's some people that view that list as something important today someone i don't even know some kid training in baltimore messaged me asking me to watch his match <laughs> from training it's, do you get a lot of that no that really was a, that was a i've had people ask me to watch their matches that people i know just mm. for an opinion like i'm still young too so it's still kind of new to me that happening but for someone i've never met to message me and ask me to watch their match from training just that's kind of interesting that's, that's awesome cool. did you watch it not yet. Not yet. Well, it was today, yeah. I guess, yeah. right? Yeah. Exactly. What about you, Pete? What I don't realize, though, is, like, the PWI, it matters because it gives, like, fans that may not know who you are a chance to go look at you and see what you're doing, mm -hmm. you know? And this kind of business where building your, your brand and marketing is so important, like, any little thing that you can get helps with that. So, like, I always looked at it as, like, you know, something to be proud of, regardless to what other people may think about the situation. It kind of goes back to like you mentioned the Sam Adonis conversation we had, Lee, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, about how some of these, the, it was kind of when we're talking about the online dirt sheets, some of them should be using their, their stroke to expose to younger talent. Yeah. And I'm hoping that's what we do here. Um, but uh, PWI does that with this list, right? I mean, yeah. there's a lot of indie talk in there. It is like who, who's buzzworthy out there you should be checking on. And like I look through this list and I got to tell you, I mean, I may know the names of like maybe a third of this list, mm -hmm. and how much indie wrestling are we watching, consuming, working with, what you know, everything around wrestling mayhem show and indie mayhem show, right? Mm -hmm. So this is like a big. If you want to see like what is next, what should I check out, and you can find these guys. You know, a, a YouTube search will probably. I mean, I know you guys are all over YouTube, so that's that's good. Hey, do you guys do you guys look at the PWA five hundred and learn about new guys from, via that too? When I was a teenager, I did. There was a few people I would find like 
before I knew how the list worked, mm. I saw someone ranked higher than someone I was a big fan of. Mm. I would read the description and I would search them up on YouTube. Now, not as much, but definitely back when what, I was a teenager. What did we do? Back when I was a teenager, we didn't have the internet. <laughs> and I was just like, I don't know who this guy is. And I, all I know is that blurb. I know he did stuff in this promotion in Indiana, Paradigm, whatever. And, you know, yeah. and that's it. And hopefully he comes to my town. And I, I in the inkling in the back of my head, I was like, I read his name in the PWI 500. Like, that's probably how 1995 wrestling <laughs> worked, right? Uh, if you were into the indies and in, in the up and coming, so um, and, and it's also been interesting because there has been a lot of I know Joe Dabrowski has been posting a lot of old PWI 500 that include like some young kid named CM Punk about uh, uh 20 years ago when he mm-hmm. was coming through Pittsburgh, <laughs> so and being featured from Pittsburgh promotions, you know, yeah. like it, it, it's cool, it, it, you know, and now that is a part of uh when you guys get wherever you, you're getting Japan. You know, WWE, AEW, wherever you can roll back to this. Um, speaking of Lee, I also I, I we do have to mention. Speaking of Japan, you had a pretty good match recently with uh, New Japan's own uh, Chase Owens as well. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> so, um, it, it was a so that was a. I mean, that's that's a guy that's there where you want to go. Yeah, and even the day before, I was out in Long Island, New York. I did a tryout seminar thing for marvelous wrestling Mm -hmm. which is a newer promotion that's only been around for a few years but the woman it's mainly a joshi promotion ran by shigusa nagayo and she's a big deal i didn't realize how big a deal she was until Mm -hmm. i was there and talking to shirley doe like she's the hulk hogan of joshi wrestling (laughs) she was the first japanese woman to main event madison or wrestling madison square garden and all these things so it's like that Thursday doing that and Friday driving back to Pittsburgh to wrestle Chase Owens. It's cool. That's awesome. Hey, that's you know what if you if you want to know if something's important in Japan, you ask either Sam Adonis or Shirley Doe at this point, right? right. <laughs> it's kind of our sources for that because I know he's pulled out names where I like uh, when we do the the hardcore memory show, he's pulled out names. Where I'm just like I have no idea who he's talking about. You know, here's something from like 70s like Japanese wrestling that he's followed. So. But um, anyways, uh, so with that, like I said, um, uh, maybe ironically, maybe it's fate. You guys are going to be facing each other this weekend. Rise Wrestling, uh, Rise with a Y. No, not the women's promotion. They're doing some cool stuff, too. But, you know, I don't know. You were working with the Joshi stuff, so who knows? Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So um, I know you guys have been going at it uh, on on the social media, on your videos, cutting promos on each other. Um, Ali, you've been there before. You've been the grand champion. Right. And, uh, you know, you have any thoughts going into this? Everybody knows how good PB Smooth is. He's, I think he's next up. And that's not me hyping him up. So when I he beat him, I look good. Yeah. It's just, he is. Like, there's nothing PB Smooth can't do mm-hmm. except beat me. Ooh. I don't know my cat said otherwise. <laughs> Your cat won't make eye contact with me because it's afraid of me because I'm scary. <laughs> Holy. What do you I have like to say? Him. I like him. He's a funny guy. He's a funny guy. But, it, but as I said, like, for me, like, it, there, there's too much history behind this. Like, like, I should already be a Rise Grand Champion right now. And I still have you know, chip on my shoulder from when I got cheated by System Elite. I still got a chip on my shoulder from Matt Connor. And when I walk into this match, like I said, I, I don't see Lee Moriarty because I like him too much. You know what I'm saying? I got to I gotta see a roadblock that's in front of where I'm trying to go. And I only go forward. There you go. Um, hey, standard question heading out here. I've asked you guys this before, and of course... Uh, it's been a while since we've had you on this, so I, I'm sure the answers will change. What's the best and worst thing about indie wrestling for you guys at this stage of your career? Lee? Hmm. Best thing right now is just meeting new people. As much as I've been traveling, I've been able to meet a lot of new cool people, like Mouse's Wrestling Adventures, and he's helped me out a lot. And um, worst thing? Lack of sleep. I guess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. You know how it is. Yeah, I'm aware. PB, how about you? Uh, I'd say the best thing is just all the opportunities that are out there right now. Like, there's a lot of TV companies. There's a lot of places looking for new guys. So there's just a lot of opportunity for new talent. 
And the worst thing I'd say is uh, how toxic wrestling Twitter can be at times. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Yeah, sometimes you need a detox from all that. Yeah, it, that's where that's where you do the uh, the the no uh, the no tech vacations every once in a while, right? Yeah. So you yeah. need that. Everybody needs that for your own mental well being. I feel. So I'm going to sure. take one myself next week, probably. Uh, PB Smooth, where can people find you? Uh, generally, coming up, of course, Rise. I know you're going to be at Revenge Wrestling, also fighting for some yeah. gold with some 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 somebody named Wardlow. I don't never heard of that guy. <laughs> um, at the end of the month, I'll be debuting for Ohio Wrestling Alliance in Columbus. I'm taking on Jake Something, so that's going to be a really big match. Um, I'll be at Unsanctioned Pro sometime in November. That's also in Columbus. I'll be at Glory Pro October 5th. That's the St. Louis area. And a few more places. I'll keep you guys posted on my Twitter, Instagram, and all that. Awesome. Lee, and then actually I do have a question from the chat room after you get that out there. Where I'll be, well, obviously the September 7th, I'll be at Rise Mm -hmm. beating PB Smooth and moving (laughs) on to the next round. And then after that, I'll be... In Wheeling for IWC, uh, Paradigm Pro Wrestling in Indiana, Imagine Wrestling out in Altoona, AIW a few times this month, which I'm really excited about. Yeah, both of you guys yeah. end up at AIW, right? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. They're doing a lot of great things. I heard they're going to be doing another iPay-Per-View coming up. Yeah. I think, 20th. is that the bobblehead night with D'Lo Brown? Yeah. That is the yeah. best. Like, I love show titles from AIW. <laughs> but when I saw Bobblehead Night with D'Lo Brown, I don't even care if there's real bobbleheads. That's just the, if just just there's going to be an image of just the entire crowd doing the bobblehead thing, right? I don't know how Ford comes up with it, man. I those those guys are just just evil geniuses putting that stuff together. You, you know who D'Lo Brown's tagging with though? Hmm? Yeah. Big Twan Tucker. No way. <laughs> Big Twan Tucker, man. Uh, he's the one, for those that don't know, that um, uh, I think Adam Cole had called out on an episode of NXT, one of Gargano's trainees, I believe. Yeah, right? at the school. Yeah, so cool. that's awesome. Awesome. Um, uh, last real quick question uh, to wrap this up. Chris LaRusso is out there. So, considering Wardlow got his big break, who's up next from the Pittsburgh area besides you two, of course? Hmm. The so wealth of talent here, Who's, or, at least, or at least people hard. that come through here. I mean, Wardlow technically is a Cleveland guy, I believe, but um, uh, definitely made his bones here in the Pittsburgh area. That's really hard <laughs> because there's so many talented people in Pittsburgh, and there's promotions I'm not too familiar with the rosters. Like, I'm not that familiar with KSWA. Yeah. I'm not that familiar with RWA. Like, I know a little bit, so it's hard. I think a few people that I think are going to, like, get big opportunities with the way wrestling is right now. Andrew Palace, Corey, I can see Chris LaRusso doing that. John Roden works really hard. Uh, is it Daniel Eats? Yeah, Daniel yeah, Eats. He, yeah. yeah, he is that look and that presence about him. I think he's yeah. had some performance center stuff too. Yeah, but I don't. He, he's one of those guys. Like, is he? I don't think he's from Pittsburgh, right? No, I don't. But he you know, a lot of RWA. I think yeah. is one of the big promotions for him. Mm. So and and also just debuted a revenge um, for their anniversary show in July, I believe. So yeah, he's taking the bill next time. So that's gonna be a good match. Nice, nice. Baby, who are you seeing? Um. I don't know, and I don't mean this to be like in a selfish kind of way, but like lately I've just been trying to focus on improving and working on my own craft, so I haven't really like dove out of like watching too many other people aside from like what I study tape wise. Mm-hmm. But I will say though, once me and Lee make it wherever we're going, we're going to bring people up with us. You know what I'm saying? That's right. That's the love. That's the New York way. We're all going to make it. Pittsburgh, that's the New York way. Awesome. Hey, thank you so much, guys. Thanks for taking the time. Again, congratulations on uh, on your debuts on the PWI 500, and congratulations to everybody. We we looked through the, the list. Uh, Producer Missy went through and uh, is trying to uh, give notice to everybody uh, from our circles that, that, you know, friends of the show and everything that have been a part of it, and it's really cool to, um, I, as she was going through, I kept hearing comments of, like, I can't believe, I can't believe how many people I know on the list <laughs> you know that I, you know that we you know do the shows with and talk to, to on the regular basis and everything you know it's really cool to see that and and see um a, a pretty strong pittsburgh cleveland erie you know all around here this 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 kind of 
hotbed I think that's happening here in the uh, I guess technically the Midwest um, um, with pro wrestling. So uh, congratulations, guys! Thank you so much for being on. Go check these guys out if you're not checking out Rise Wrestling this weekend. Of course, if you're not there, it'll be on IndieWrestling.us, IndieWrestling.network. Check out Revenge Pro, of course, in two weeks. I believe that's September 21st in Erie. If you're up there, also that'll be on IndieWrestling.us following and uh, DVDs through them as well. So thank you so much. And until next time, please, whether or on the list or not, please support Indie Wrestling. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.